Ah, uh, hell yeah, guys. What is happening? The Capitalist here with DotaLive.net, and we are back for game two of the semifinals. Gamer University qualifying number two. This is Helimoto versus Potom Bottom. Potom Bottom did cape take game one. If you're just now joining us, Potom Bottom did take game one. Um, kind of convincingly. I mean, early early on in the laning phase, Helimoto did have the advantage. They did have the gold lead. They did have the experience lead. But that did not transition very well once they started talking about that 20 minute mark. Just a couple bad team fights. One in particular where they did have the Aegis. Storm Spirit had an Aegis. And they tried to force a fight, but bottom bottom with some really good coordination threw down a wall, that Darkseer wall, and then backed up. They all grouped up on the Storm Spirit. And the rest of the team wasn't able to follow up. So he popped the Aegis. He came back up alive. And the rest of his team wasn't really there because there was this wall in between him and them. And it was a great little use of both the, the terrain and Dark Series abilities. Team ban. But we're going to go on to the bans. We got Broodmother, Chaos Knight, and Lycan being banned out by Helimoto. And then Ursa, Enchantress, Radiant and Darkseer banned out by Potem Bottom. So with that Ursa ban, that leaves a lot of heroes left open in the pool. I mean, first of all, I speak banned the out the Enchantress. So Chen is a pretty high priority pickup here. Chen. And there it is. Biron is the first pick for Helimoto, and instantly, Poda Bottom picks up the Chen. I think this is exactly what they wanted. Now, they still have a couple of uh, different pickups here. There is still some options available. There's still the Invoker. They can pick up Windrunner, Leshrac. All those heroes have been in the top one too. Five seconds remaining. It's always fun to see how one hero, Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight, man. It's always interesting to see how that one introduction of that one hero just sort of feels like it. It feels like it. It fills the pool. With those heroes who used to be constantly banned. And they're going to offer the Brewmaster here. We haven't seen a Brewmaster yet today, and I am very excited. Brewmaster, an extremely strong teamfight hero. Coupled with the Chen, they have some decent ganking and some great push. Brewmaster is going to win the teamfights that they're they're going to try and force via pushing. And once they win that, Chen's just going to start knocking down those towers. We're going to see Leshrac and Queen of Pain picked up by Helimoto as their 2-3. And now Crystal Maiden picked up as the third uh, pick. Great support for a Brewmaster. Venomancer, Crystal Maiden, either of those two slows coupled with a Brewmaster is just amazing. Add in the fact that Crystal Maiden getting at least one or two levels in that aura extremely helpful because brewmaster if anything he's very mana dependent you look at the pros and cons list of a brewmaster the pros just go seem to go on and on and on but one of the cons is he is very mana dependent sometimes you see him go mana boots just because he is so mana dependent now you'd much rather have phase but radiant team you got to do what you got to do tide hunter invoker band out by Helimoto. This is the first time in a long time that I've seen Invoker banned out in the second banning phase. We're going to see Lich and Earthshaker picked up. Taken away all those supports away from Hel uh, Helimoto. While well, Helimoto taking away the Invoker, which obviously Bottom Bottom would love to have as their solo mid. Because they can do one or two things here. They can do a uh, um, two-one-one with Chen in the safe lane, jungling. So sort of a pseudo try and sort of deal. Or they can have the CM and uh, Brewmaster middle, at your service. and they can have the Chen doing jungle, and have two solos in the side lanes. Windrunner going to be picked up by Helimoto, and that puts them at a lot of different solos. And then once again, we're going to see. Leshrac. I mean, unless they go for Furion uh, Jungle and they pick up some sort of melee initiator here. Which there isn't a whole lot left in the pool, but Sand King is one. And if they want Potem Bottom, 
They don't really have a space for Sand King to fit in the pool. Now, he can solo. We've seen him solo before. In fact, earlier we saw him versus a Shadow Fiend. But... It's not ideal. So they can either pick up a Sand King to deny Helomoto that pickup. Or they can just leave it. So we're talking about a Sand King Lesh lane, a very strong lane. Windrunner Suicide lane, Queen of Pain in middle, who's just going to be taking control of the runes, come coupled with Furion. That's a lot of ganking power very early with runes. So bottom bottom using all of their extra time to think about this puck. And it's gonna be the puck Radiant team. now puck with that silence we don't see a whole lot of puck um with that recent change in phase shift it makes him uh potentially better it makes him better in the laning phase early on but i think most teams would agree that overall makes him much worse for everything else and in and, and the overall grand scheme of things, he's much worse now. Not being able to right click. Anti -mage. That phase shift. That's not what they're going to do. Apparently they're not going to run with a Sand King Lesh lane. And instead they're going to have Lesh Rack once again babysitting. Now I'm not a big fan of this, but Hello Moto apparently is. Big problems with the the way that Leshrac babysits Silencer. is the fact that Wow! Silencer going all out in the silences. This is a big team fight coming out from Poe to bottom. Wow. I I'm just When was the last time you guys saw a silencer? Effing never. That's when. I I and I'm like I'm tempted to just like wait wait for the, the remakes. But it's not happening. Prepare so, for battle. presumably, well, it looks like actually right now Brewmaster is going middle, so we might see uh, a Silencer in the safe lane. Queen of Pain does a lot of damage. It's very hard to deal with. But one hero who can deal with it is the Brewmaster. I think Silencer would just uh, have way too much of a hard time in that lane. Not really going to be able to get. Gonna be able to get a whole lot of CS. We're gonna see Lesh Track babysitting Anime Mage at bottom, Queen of Pain, Middle, Windrunner, Top, and Nature's Prophet, of course, in that jungle. Anyway, guys, let's go over uh, top to bottom, left to right. Who's playing what? We got Q playing Queen of Pain in that middle, in the Boz on Windrunner, Savadoom on Lesh Track, PSTM on Nature's Prophet, and Pimpalicious on Anime Mage. And we got MTW, Kabop on Chen, Aoi 2000, and Silencer. Snake King on Pup. Hizzle's on Crystal Maiden and Beat is. Again, with the name changes. Ah! Beat is on uh, Brewmaster. It's okay, though. The last game I casted with Beat is was rather infuriating. Because everyone was changing their names, but Beat is was the first. And he changed his name to, to you know, some other. Pro player. I didn't think it was a pro player player on the other team. And so it was it was doubly infuriating. Anyway, so all around this uh, this lane Brewmaster versus Queen of Pain, of course Queen of Pain with that Q ability is just so powerful in harassment, but Brewmaster does have the tankiness to be able to survive through it. And he can even get aggressive at times. If he's able to hit a clap, he can try and get a couple melee hits. But I don't think that's really a good trade for him. He really needs to get some CS. And as it is, he's already taken up way too much damage. I think that was a bit of a mistake trying to hit that clap and doing harassment. This Queen of Pain is just going to kite you around and get in a bunch of extra auto attacks. So now Brewmaster is at a serious disadvantage in this lane. Now, normally Queen of Pain would have the advantage anyway, especially considering... The Nature's Prophet with that teleport is going to be helping out with runes anyway, so you're guaranteed rune control pretty much. So Brewmaster already at a disadvantage, he's pretty much surviving in the lane and getting some CS. But now that he just did that, he's put himself in a really bad position, he's going to have to bring himself regen right away. And I'm not sure if he should really go bottle. 
Like he might have to he might have to go boots and some extra health regen. A lot of times we see Brewmaster still limit bottle just because bottle is so good for that mana regen. That being said, unless he wants to to um Crow. Use the crow to fountain it back and forth. Um I don't think he's really gonna be able to get any runes whatsoever. Unless he gets some help from the, the Crystal Maiden. And have her just sit on top. Other than that, Queen of Pain's obviously going to be able to outrun him to runes. Whoa. And wherever it's not, Nature's Prophet surely will be. So we got Illusions up bottom. Leaves of three, let he is going to pop it. Not waiting for... Um... There, sorry guys, i got to open this up so I can go to Hero Chase. That way I can actually click on heroes a little bit. Anyway... I don't know, uh, Queen of Pain not opting for that fast bottle, which is very common. Zabadoom already doing some nice stacking and pulling. Trying to help uh, keep the puck out of lane as much as possible. Puck, this is pretty much the best thing you can do as a puck. Sometimes early on you'll even see pucks like uh, teleport you know, into here or somewhere. It's because uh, this is pretty much the only, th this is the best way for you to get experience. You're not going to get any gold. Forget about it. Lightstrike's just going to force you out of lane. Microphone Our Brewmaster does go for that bottle. And I think he's really going to have to have his team allow him to ferry. And bottle ferry in considered... Yes, Azu. Really? You guys don't like that? Alright, very well. Microphone muted. People don't like it. See, now, now, now this is something I'm gonna have to change every single time. And on. Whoa. Oh, that's even worse. That was not the one I wanted to click. Well, we'll wait until some sort of pause or something. Anyway, as a as a player, that names thing is so much better. But I can understand on the stream. You can't really read it. It's not very big. It's kind of useless to you. Anyway, Puck getting some decent experience already. The fact that she's level 3 is just... It, it means she's doing decently well. The um, Kizzle's getting a nice little double pull there. Winner's going to try and pick some of it off with a power shot. Pain without consequence. We're going to see a smoke up. They're both going to try and... I don't know. Middle's going to be very hard to gank, but... Frostbite is an excellent skill versus Queen of Pain, but she only has level 1. She did not for 2 levels. And we're going to see a net coming out. Trying to burst her down real quick. There goes the Frostbite, and there she goes. Too much burst damage. Unfortunately, that was rather unfortunate that she was as close to the Brewmaster as she was. Insta-clap before anything even really happened. Silencer. Maxing out that Glaze of Wisdom, allowing him to see us much better. One level of stats as well. And then we're going to see uh, some levels in the last word. Probably going to completely ignore Curse of the Silent. Because he's going to just be farming away. And if he's going to be farming away, he really relies completely on... Oh, Annie Mage picking up the puck kill at bottom. Diving the tower. Rather unfortunate, usually. I mean, unless he, he just was able to get a blink and maybe one auto attack kept uh, Puck from being able to have the mana to have an Illusory Orb. But normally she's just going to be playing it as safe as humanly possible and just try and pick up any sort of experience that they give her. It's just playing completely safe until you get level 6 and then we're probably going to see some sort of gank. Whether Chen and CM come bottom, or Puck teleports top. She's one of those heroes, kind of like a Beastmaster, where once you get that ultimate, you really should be ganking heavily with it. And these hero icons are bugging the hell out of me, but I don't really want to change it again. Illusions finally picked up. Brewmaster does get a, uh, a rune. I think that was a bit of a mistake by Queen of Pain. They really lost that... Kind of losing the uh, the control she had over the lane now. 
Now that Brewmaster is level 6, it's going to be a bit harder. There's no opportunities for you to kill a Brewmaster now. Now, she's still going to be able to harass him, but not nearly as much. Clap is just amazing, and now that he has a rune in his bottle as well, he has the mana regen to just spam Clap. Bottom tower already taking a lot of chip damage with this uh, Leshrac Animage combo. Leshrac, that is one advantage that Leshrac as a support hero, as a babysitter, he's really the only babysitter that gives you any sort of ability to threaten towers. So, in, in a lot of teams' minds, that makes up for his lack of ability to hit stuns. Because unless you really, like, outplay your opponent, you're not going to be hitting very many stuns without any sort of setup. And now without that tower, Any Mage has a lot more room. He's not going to be pushing as much. He's going to try and keep the lane back closer to his tower. Because he's going to have all this room to chase down Snaking. Silencer, they do pick up the Windrunner kill. All that massive amounts of damage. They didn't even require the Silencer ult. Just a Frostbite on top of the Windrun was good enough. Frostbite is such a good skill against their team. Queen of Pain, Windrun, Animage, all of them. Are going to have a hard time against a Frostbite. All are here. Under attack. Ten throwing up that ultimate oh, and Viz on Brewmaster. He picks up another room, but they're going to start setting up for top. Ten is fully healed as creeps, and they're going to start pressuring their tier one. And this means there's going to be some sort of response. As you see, Windrunner is already coming up to hit a power shot, but here comes Invis Brewmaster going to hit the slope. There goes the uh, silence off, and they're easily going to be able to clean up this Windrunner. Very nicely done. The ultimate, maybe not necessarily required, but it was rather helpful. You definitely want to stop that Windrunner from being able to pop that spell and just being able to outrun the uh, stun from the Stone Panda. But unfortunately, Animage is getting free farm at bottom. He's going to go for a very fast Battle Fury. Maybe not. Bottom, bottom, putting a lot of pressure on top. Already taking a tier two. Nice little shackle shot. The Chant Teleport going to go up. And it is going to be, he's going to be able to get away. No big response. Yep, he does get the Perseverance. I was about to say, there was, if they wanted, I don't advise it, but if they want to, they can get Animage into this team fights a little bit faster. If they're feeling threatened, the fact that a tier 2 has already gone down 9 minutes in, they can try and put a Vanguard on Animage and go into that Vlad's farming build. Which, obviously, not nearly as good for farming, but it does allow your Animage to come into team fights a bit earlier. That Vanguard gets him the tankiness to be able to live through initial bursts of damage. Ten working his way towards that mech. Silencer already has that push stick, which is so good. Four staff on Silencer is a key item. It's the only item that you should be going on him first thing. Now, other items such as drums, and then eventually into sheep stick and those sort of items are nice. But a Silencer is just so old. He, he just has no escape mechanisms, no stuns. No slows. All he has is his ability to silence people. And even that's just an ultimate. So four staff coupled with the last word that he provides. They're not easily being able to combo him down. Now interesting enough, he still has only one level in it. Now it's typical for silence to, to get one or two levels in stats. Which really just says to me that Potom Bottom doesn't really want to force a fight with that Silencer. I'm guessing he's going to start uh, getting some levels in it after level 11. You get level 2 of that ultimate. Because Last Word is really too big to pass up. Once you've got the survivability in 4 Staff, 
and you've already sort of got the levels to be able to last hit against any hero effectively. Last word just provides too much to team fights. I mean, you're talking about Leshrac popping Edict and not being able to throw down a stun for three seconds. However, I should open up the items tab now that I'm not sitting in the broadcaster. By Kabop. In a bit of a trouble here. He's trying to get his, some counter wards down. Puck snaking, trying to save him. Silence does go off. The teleports are trying to save. He just keeps casting it. But it's not going to be enough. Q coming in. Oh my goodness. There he goes. Snaking, trying to get cleaned up. Nice little shackle shot going down. And now, here comes the panda. The brewmaster throwing down his ultimate. And this automatically wins the team fight for them. The question is, how many pickups can they get? There goes the cyclone. Nicely done. There goes the purge. And now they're just going to jump on Windrunner. She pops Windrun, but it's not going to be enough. Frostbite's going to keep her in place. And Q wants to be able to pick off some more heroes, but has nothing to do. So they win that 4 and 5 team fight. Silencer! He's a hero who. There he goes. He already starts leveling that last word. Oh, what is going on? Furion! Where did you come from, man? Chen teleport. Gotta be able to save the Crystal Maiden! Fair League saving her, and unfortunately, Panda's in a very bad position. Brewmaster's gonna go down here. All they need is a stun, and he is done for. So they do pick up that kill, so nicely done there. But unfortunately, he traded a lot of heroes, <laughs> and not enough. A lot of farm went up to Aoi 2000 on that silencer as well. That's one thing about Brewmaster I always try and hit on. Brewmaster has a synergy. Brewmaster synergizes with many, many heroes very, very well. It's because he fits in so many different roles. And he's a great anti-carry, he's a great initiator, he provides so much to team fights, etc, 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 right? But one of the best things that he does is obviously team fights. He wins team fights every single time. At least early on. And it's because you can turn a 4 on 5 to a 6 on 5 pretty much with those pandas. Those pandas pretty much count as two different heroes. With the amount of sables and the damage that they do. So pretty much what happens is if you're able to pick up some sort of hard carry such as Silencer or some sort of solo pusher such as Broodmother, Broodmother hero who sits in a lane and just farms and farms and farms and pushes and pushes and pushes until she has two or three items at least. At the very least BKB. She has to have BKB. Silencer you're going to get caught out here. Very nicely done. Great gank. Uh, actually with that four staff and the Chen heals coming out. Nice job. It felt like uh, Helomoto really sort of thought that kill was in the bag. They weren't sort of um, auto-attacking forward. They weren't moving in position for that four staff. But, of course, the Chen heals are... That's why Chen is so good. They're going to start taking the bottom tier 1 and teleporting top to defend the tier 1 there. Kizzles picks off Radiant's by the anti in middle. With the assistance of the Queen of Pain. Snaking, trying to do what he can. Try and force back this wave with um, some spamming. Brewmaster, once he gets that blink though, he's already working on it. He just needs another 500. That's going to be pretty big. Aoi 2000 is going to have some big farm. Coupled with the uh, the puck, you really need some sort of initiator for a puck. Because that orb is just so slow. Unless he's farming really, really well. Leshrac in a bit of trouble here. Great job. Very well done teleporting away. Not popping the leash. And just full on teleporting away. Anyway, they really got to stop, put a stop to this uh, animator who's been farming away. He does have Battle Fury. He got it about 13 minutes in. And that was coupled with Treads already. So he's going to really start upping his farm. So they have to get some sort of initiation. Because Snake King, Puck by himself, a de Radiant decent Radiant initiator. But he has to, really has to have Blink Dagger. Otherwise, that orb is just too slow. Every single team is like, oh, look, an orb's coming. Better split up. So with that slow, it's going to allow Puck to be able to hit those actual nukes with that orb. And be able to put himself in a position to get great silences and great ultimates. 
So Panda having that uh, that blink is gonna be so key. Jackal shot, very nicely done. They might try to go on this silencer popping the ultimate though. And here comes up Brewmaster popping his ultimate. But very nicely done. They're only gonna lose one hero out of this. And I think, oh, actually Nature's Prophet might go down here. He's trying to teleport away. He is gonna get out and the Queen of Pain is just gonna blink away right after that. So I think that's pretty good. Helimoto. That's pretty much the boast they can hope for, and especially if they get some counter kills here. Nice little four staff pushing the Brewmaster away, and now a big clap hitting all four heroes, and they're just getting completely wiped. Helomoto completely grouping up for all the AoE nukes. That was pretty much just, all they needed was Brewmaster and Puck there. The three nukes they provided pretty much solo could have wiped out those four heroes. That was a big mistake. Big, Radiant's big mistake by Helimoto. Very good reactions by Potom Bottom, though. The four staff keeping Brewmaster away. Keeping him out of danger while he was shackle shot. Silencer are going to start working on that sheep. That scythe of ice. And he has 2,800 gold here. Now, you could go Aghanims, which is... Yes, Panda, uh, Brewmaster, with Aghanims is amazing. Okay, I was, I was about to say. I was like, I really don't think you should go that. Pick him at the tower, in middle. Only thing they can really do. Anyway, Brewmaster's gonna start going for the Aghanims now. But now that he has that initial... Um, Initiation. Another thing the Brewmaster does is he forces the fight around him. Uh, because with that Blink Dagger, he's able to jump on the enemy, slow them down, and then he pops his ultimate. And what is the natural reaction of a team with Panda in the middle of your ranks? You're slowed down, and he's popping his ultimate. You run the fuck away. You spam your your you spam your blinks, you spam your teleports, you do whatever you can to get out of his way because those pandas are just gonna popple stomp you. So that provides a lot of opportunity for a, a, a silencer to be able to get a lot of auto attacks off. So as long as Panda initiates, initiates the fight, they're going to be okay. Now even if they don't initiate the fight, even if Helomoto sees some sort of opportunity and they get some sort of Queen of Pain hitting a big ultimate and Leshrac magically hits a stun without you know any real setup. They're still going to be able to force staff the silencer away and provide some serious crowd control to keep him alive. And then once he's out of range of those kind of nukes, those kind of auto attacks, he's just going to start putting out, outputting the DPS. So Helomoto not really in a good position to force any sort of fights right now. They're going to lose if Brewmaster initiates, and they still might lose even if they do get a good initiation off. So instead, they're going to get counter pushes in. They're going to take the top tower. They're going to start threatening the tier 2, and they're going to get this AM farm. AM is nothing without farm. And with that Battle Fury, he's still not really anything. Battle Fury, a great item. Delays your effectiveness and team fights. Great initiation by Snaking. Hitting a four man silence, followed up by a three man clap, and they're instantly picking off heroes left and right. Queen of Pain, the silence, stops him once again, and they pick up three easy kills. Easy kills. Now that Snaking has that blink dagger, he's going to do much better being able to initiate. Before that, he was relying solely on the Brewmaster. But now that he has that blink, it's much different now. The two of them blinking in, so strong. Wow, did he not see that double damage? No, he did. Alright. The no less rag blinked it. Double Once damage. again, Pimpalicious probably just gonna clean up Ancients, clean up the forest, trying to do what he can to make up some sort of farm. He's already getting some tankiness. He got a Vitality Booster, and then he's gonna follow that up into Manta. Which, while providing him a lot of damage... It, it also provides him some decent survivability. Because if you have heroes like Puck throwing down his ultimate and your silence on you, or that Frostbite, 
being able to Manta out of those things is so key. And then you have that one, two seconds maybe where the team, where the other team doesn't know which one you are. That gives you enough time to blink away or press the advantage and try and kill a hero. Or at least burn their mana all the way down. Like this. This is this is pretty sneaky. By pull and bottom. Pressuring bottom. This is this is pretty much the exact opposite of what you normally see out of smoke games. Attack. Which is smoke in your jungle or somewhere where you think they don't have wards and go into the enemy's team jungle. Instead they do the exact opposite. Any mage feeling kind of um Feeling top is free farm because he knows a lot of the heroes are bottom. Pushes it out. Now, unfortunately, I don't think that's what, um... I don't think that's the pick that Paul and Bottom wanted. But it is a pick. They really want the anime age. Because they're having a hard time... There's a lot of counter pushing going on by Helomoto. Between the Furion and the anime age, those heroes, two heroes by themselves... Just the positioning... And the push that they provide really quickly is so hard to lock down. Virion could be anywhere on the map. You're all bottom, next thing you know, he's top. Any mage. Constantly farming jungle, going to lane. Farming jungle, going to lane. So he can push up really far into a lane if you're all top. He some sort of sees some sort of push in other lanes, such as middle and top right now. If Queen wasn't there, he would be the one pushing in bottom. And they've already lost their tier 2s, so they don't really have to worry too much. So they're going to start threatening this tier 2. While well, Paul and Bottom starts setting up to push into the base. This is going to give them at least an extra minute of farm. And maybe a tower. Tower is going to go down, so that means Paul and Bottom, because they're not defending this, they're, they are committing to this push. Fully. They're gonna get in, get in. Couple of auto attacks. There is still glyph down. Should they want to pop it? There goes the initiation. The silence goes off. No wind run, and wind runner does go down instantly. Nature's prophet gonna follow up here real quick. And now Q, he has the sheep. They're trying to pick off silencer. Uh, Leshrac doing the only thing he really can, but there's just not enough without the queen of pain. The queen of pain is actually back now. Oh man, but it's so, so hard. They're initiating these team fights, but unfortunately the tower is still not down, and the glyph is still up. Nice little stun coming out, hitting two heroes, forcing the punch, puck to dodge it. But at the very least, they do successfully defend their tower. They gave up a couple hero kills. But really that puts them, it puts bottom bottom at a good position. It wasn't what they wanted, Completely winning a team fight and taking um, towers. Furion. And a little aggressive here, hoping to pick off some squishies. It's one thing, especially with the Furion and with blinking heroes. Kabop sacrificing himself pretty much. They should be able to pick up Kabop. Sacrificing, uh, knowing that he's not going to get out, but he can at the very least teleport Kizzles away. Unless Kabop. He has no. He has. Wow. Great dodge, but if they pick up the silence, it'll definitely be worth it. Look at him go down. There goes the Aegis. If they can pick him up again, but they don't have any sort of initiating stun from Leshrac. And with a follow-up and coming in from bottom bottom, they're gonna jump on Nature's Prophet. The mech does go off, helping to save him. Double damage just doing so much work that Leshrac is gonna go down. And now they're gonna try and mitigate their losses. They picked up the Aegis and traded the Leshrac for that. That's pretty much the best that they can hope for. The gold graph, if you look at it, 4 to 18, 25 minutes in. All the towers pretty much are down for Helomoto, but it, but still, the gold lead not hugely in the lead. It's why if you just look at the score, you just automatically presume, oh yeah, that team's crushing. Well, no, they have an anti-mage who's been farming very well. 2,500 gold lead for the Dire. 2,500, 26 minutes in. Now, that's a, that's a decent gold lead, but one bad team fight? And that's completely turned around. That's completely neutralized. Because the team fight gold that they gain, on top of that, the heroes farming while they're dead, maybe even take a tower. 
completely neutralized. They have to be very careful here. There's a lot of movement for Paul and Bottom with the uh, puck and the Brewmaster being able to blink. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Heroes like Queen of Pain and Windrunner have to be very careful. Especially Windrunner. Let's go over and see what items we got. Of course, we saw the scythe from last time. Picked up on Silencer. Chen is going to be start working towards that Aghanims. Manta on Animage. Push on uh, Nature's Prophet as well. A lot of pushes going down. Aghanims, of course, on Q. And that is one of the best things about uh, Queen of Pain. Is she farms up that Aghanims and she's able to just uh, throw waves whenever she wants. If she can, She could just pop this wave and do a little bit of damage to the heroes as well. But instead, they're not going to do it quite yet. This tower is going to go down. I think they kind of let that free. You're going to see initiation. Bloodstrike is definitely going to go down here. But he's not really that big of an important hero. They can pick up Windrunner as well. That is pretty big. And they, even the Chen heals go down as well. There's just way too much damage. And Animage, without any supports, isn't able to lock down any heroes. He pops the Manta, but doesn't do anything with it. He really has to have some sort of stuns to lock down these heroes. He's even running away from this puck. And bottom bottom, I mean, they're just trying to distract bottom bottom. They can't win a team fight 3v5, full health, full mana. But eventually, Pot and Bottom does group up, and they start taking down that Rax. Now, they can choose to back up here. There is... I, mean, I think they should. Range Rax, not really that important. And Halomoto, they have some really great ability to pick off heroes. Once you push in that tower, if you separate at all, the Furion, the Queen of Pain, all of that mobility coming out from Halomoto. You have to be very careful. Hizzles... Gonna be getting some aggressive warding in. Maybe not. Halomoto. Smoked up. Looking for some sort of pick here. I think really the best they can hope for right now is some sort of pick, such as on Kebab. Shackle shot not latching though. A pick, a tower, and a roche. They certainly can't counter Rax. But they can get themselves a little bit more farm. Kebab getting kind of low. Animage getting sheeped. He pops the Manta. There goes the ultimate coming in from Brewmaster. He's going to start crushing on these squishies. Nature's Prophet going to go down. Leshrac trying to get away. Windrunner as well. If they can bait out that ultimate and still live, this will be pretty big. They only throw away the Nature's Prophet, and they picked up a tower. Elomoto is is playing pretty well around the um, around that Brewmaster Ultimate. They've never been in a position where they've had to force that fight with the Brewmaster. They've always been able to back off and only lose one or two heroes with it. That's the best you can hope for. All you're doing is, you, all you're trying to do if you're Helomoto is delay the game. Silencer, while, while he does output a lot of damage very quickly, surprisingly quickly, and by the way, he has Mask of Madness. Yeah. Anyway, he puts out a lot of damage really quickly. When you're talking about going into the mid game, if he's allowed free farm, his auto attacks just all of a sudden. Just like, what, what happened? He's just crushing people. But he's not going to be able to out damage this AM. So they're just going to try and push the side lanes like right now. They have a tier 2 up. That means they can start threatening the tier 3 in top and bottom. Or excuse me, and middle. In exchange for that tier 2. Puck is going to be the only teleport. And really I think they kept going. I think they expected mass teleports but... Bottom bottom knows they're not going to lose a tower here. All they need is Puck just to spam orb and silence and that sort of thing. And to keep the creep waves back a little bit. He's actually trying to go for some sort of pick for the rest of the team who's coming in from the bottom river. They know Windrunner does get picked off. 
with the uh, Puck Ultimate, so they do at least grab that kill. Say hello to Mask of Madness. Animage, though, I mean, they really just need some sort of lockdown, and he really has to get BKB, because with the Sheeps that are now up, he's gonna have a hard time focusing down one hero, considering the fact that they don't have a whole lot of crowd control. All they have is Leshrac Stun and Shackle Shot. That's all they really have. So it's really hard to just allow enemies to just beat on a hero really quickly with that Manta. So he has to get BKB because he can't rely on his other on his team being able to lock down a hero. He's gonna get targeted fairly easily, even with Manta. They almost take down a tier three though. Very nicely done. They do get the deny, and while that would have been nice for Helomoto, I don't think they care that much. The gold lead dipping down a little bit past 2,500. If they had gotten that tower, that would have been pretty big. But a deny is still a tower down. It's still an extra 100 gold for all of your teammates. An extra 100 gold, which I don't think Kelomoto expected them to be able to get 30 minutes in. I don't think they expected to be able to take down a tier 3. Now, once Virion does get a Scythe of Ice, that'll be another lockdown spell. That'll be really helpful. But, it's still going to be hard. Same goes with Queen of Pain. They both need to be able to get Sheep Sticks. Pimpleish is doing a really great job pressuring towers when he can. Leshrac, as well, is there. I mean, just the fact that Leshrac is there makes you go, oh, crap. Edict. But well, bottom bottom, not gonna be fooled. There goes the Queen of Pain, just try and force him back. Four staffs, silencer, getting a little ballsy there. If the shackle shot had been able to latch into anything, he could have been in some serious trouble. He does still have the ages, of course. Here comes Snaking, he's gonna hit the initiation. Great ultimate, and followed up by the Brewmaster ultimate as well. Leshrac, the only hero to go down though, he buys back as well. Now they just really need a beat on this tower, but they can't. Alamos is going to try turning this around. Pimplish is trying to go in. Owie 2000, he's trying to jump on him. Shackle Shot does not latch to the trees. And we're going to see the teleport go away. He can't even burn the ages. Bull teams with some great movement. Only trading the CM and only trading Leshrac. Both teams. Now, and Snake King will probably go down here. They also pick up the Leshrac. Again, Brewmaster. That ultimate. So good. My liquor. Alright, so Kebab saves the uh, Snake King, but he's going to trade himself for that. But still, very well done. Dodging the Brewmaster Ultimate very well. Backing off, because it's really that, that big initiation when you throw down your, for your first stun with the Stone Panda. If you're able to get through that, usually you'll be okay. Especially if you're near base, because you just go back and heal if you need to. And fortunately, Bottom Bottom doesn't really have an ability to just take down a tower really quickly. Silencer, he does do some really big damage right now. But of course, his W doesn't work on towers. And on top of that, they don't have anything really else. It's all auto attacks. So especially with a Glyph. Bottom Bottom has a very hard time bursting down towers. Pretty much Helomoto concedes the first 5-10 seconds of that team fight once Panda blows that ultimate, but they're going to come right back and start threatening you real quickly. So you only have 5-7 to seven seconds of beating on that tower. So you really have to take advantage of that. Once you know you're not going to get any more picks, you just have to turn and fight that tower. As much tip damage on it as possible. So that way the next time that you're threatening the Rax, You'll be instantly going for melee, instead of trying to focus on a tower, which is probably going to get glyphed. Look at that gold lead, etching up towards the neutral line. This really could go either way. Now, of course, Potombop does have control of the map right now. 
And they can still afford to lose one, maybe two team fights right now. I mean, with the way Al 2000 has farmed up this hero, they're still decently okay. But even with all that farm, you saw, the moment Animage was on him, they really needed to help him out and get him out of there. They don't have a glyph, cannot save the tower, nice little deny. Not really that big of a deal though, the most important thing is Rax. The most important thing is this upcoming team fight. Ultimates flying around from Nature's Prophet, trying to stop these pushes and pressure the other lanes as much as possible. No, oh, the initiation! Windrunner is going in, trying to get some sort of push stick. I'm thinking he might have got push stick in by the other team. Leshrac gonna go down as well as Queen of Pain. Can they pick up the Queen of Pain? They do! And that is a huge one team fight from bottom bottom and potentially the game here unless we see a whole bunch of buybacks, but that is gonna be two racks down. Now, Halamoto already losing game one. I'm sure they're gonna try and fight this and just try and survive with two racks down. I mean, especially with the Furion, we saw it. We saw it in the game earlier versus Root. That just because you're two racks down with a Furion, you can push out that side lane. Just with that hero and teleport into these team fights. Readily enough, five heroes up, they're gonna start beating on this tower in this next team fight. Gonna decide Helomoto's fate. They're even going to take the tower before the fight is even forced. They might even take Rax. They're still waiting on the Queen of Pain, but they can't wait for her any longer. Nice little shackle shot. Puck dodging the stun, though. And look at it. Three shot. Three shot. The Windrunner instantly going down. Two heroes down now. Brewmaster a little alone. Here comes Pimpalicious. He's trying to work he can, but he's just, he has, there's no lockdown abilities. He's fighting Aoi 2000, he pops the Aegis now. Melee Rex does go down, that's a big pickup. But they're not gonna give up just yet, Pimpalish is taking so much damage from that silencer. They're gonna try and chase him, Q blinking away. And now Potom Bottom is gonna try and finish up the game here by just cleaning up this range Rex, and they should be able to do it, no problem. Look at poor Furion, he's trying to threaten the rags, but there's nothing he can do. Backdoor protection and some teleports are just too strong. The range rex doesn't go down. Look at it, four shot, five shot the Queen of Pain, but he can't even get out of the, the sight. He's gonna go down to Pimpalicious, but still. The godlike spree ended. It's a lot of gold for any mage, but... I guess the crown passes. Now, if you're gonna fight from two racks down, it's really not that big of a deal that you lost your melee racks. As long as they don't take both the racks, then you're absolutely done for. But if you're fighting, uh, if you're fighting two racks down anyway, might as well. Anything's possible with a Furon and Animage. Puck going balls deep. Look at him, they're just beating on this Rage Rags and they have to stop him. Gabop! Gabop! Auto attacks! They're just. They're, they don't care. They do not care. They're just trying to beat on his The glyph does go off. The dodges of the phase shift. Howie 2000 doing some serious work, but he's gonna go down to Epipolicious, but it doesn't matter. The Rage Rags falls. They might win the team fight, but they will lose the game. And with that, the series. Mega Creep's gonna be popped up here. You know Silencer already blew his uh, buyback, but against Mega Creeps, they can't even push out. They can't even attempt to throne. They have to have so many heroes defending, and I think now they're just having some fun. Because the throne is definitely going down now. Snaking, hiding away. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Oh man. Radiance middle tower has fallen. I don't know, there's not much else to say. I mean their only opportunity was if there was an opportunity in the land of, of theoreticals, it's right after they take Mega Creeps. If they lose the team fight but still take Mega Creeps, there's an opportunity for Helomoto to just go and try and backdoor. 
push in middle real fast with the uh, Animage. Just go for some sort of racks and, and I don't know, if they have enough time, try and go for Throne. Or second racks. But now Silencer, if they if they feeling cautious, they can just sit around and farm until he has his buyback up again. Because right now it's not gold, it's it's time that's limiting him. So all they have to do is wait around. Snaking! Oh my goodness. Pimplelicious with that ultimate. He has divine. I mean. Maybe if they didn't lose that range rex, but as it stands right now, it's just positioning. It's the constant pressure of the creeps is just too much for them to handle. I mean, Queen of Pain has to blow her ultimate every single time it's up just to try and push these lanes. The only hero who can really actively push them is Animage. Yep, and well, if, instead of waiting for buybacks, this is absolutely what they can do. They can take Roche. Roshan has fallen to the dire. Immortality. Oh, Divine Rapier. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of stating my voice now. Because there's not much to say. Everything is on the table. You have an anti mage with Rapier. You have the other team with Maker Creeps. <laughs> yes, indeed. Harkening back to the old War 3 custom map games. X Tower Siege. I love those Tower Sieges, man. They're a lot of fun. Tower Sieges and Tower Defense. Ultimate coming out from Snake King. They're going to pump combo. Here comes the Brewmaster. And poor Q is just done for. And he's he not even going in. That guy farmed up what I needed. I'm going to end the game with my Divine. I'm not going to give it to anybody. So game two goes to bottom bottom. They're going to move on to the finals. Taking out Elamoto. And I believe we're going to move on to the second semifinals.